Hello everyone, this, uh, this is Yon Skin from SK Hynix. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying uh, being in you know, this kind of big you know, consortium OCP. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, HBM, basically where we are at and where we are heading to by providing you some of the market trend and what are key drivers to uh, leading the, this uh, AI era. And also, I'm going to share a little bit about our HBM development histories and uh, uh, the, the, the most the latest product, HBM 3E. And also, I'm going to talk about a little bit of uh, what are some challenges uh, in front of us and uh, how do we overcome these challenges for the next product. Let me start with this slide. So this is, uh, the, the graph shows the total, you know, the data volume that uh, expected per every year. And so uh, by the next year, it, uh, the, uh, according to the research firm, they predict that it's going to be the somewhere 180 gigabyte, per, uh, gigabyte of the total data volume is expected next year. And so I was trying to find out if that number is correct or not as of today. So I asked you know, Gemini and ChatGPT. Gemini says it's going to be the 660 gigabyte by the end of 2030s. And the chat GPT suggests that it's going to be somewhere between 200 to 300 gigabyte uh, by the end of decade. I really, really liked about their conclusion here. So both Gemini and chat GPT 4.0 anticipate a significant surge in our data you know, uh, generation by the 2030s. The whatever the number that I just threw out isn't really matter, but the matter here all the message we need to take, uh, take away uh, from here is that the, anyway, it's no doubt that we are going to face the humongous number that the data that we have to deal with in the next you know, couple of years. So then what are some key drivers here? So they uh, uh, suggest that the expansion of 5G ID and expansion and development of AI and the last but not the least, self-generated AI uh, will drive the ex global data explosion. If we look at the, a bit more on the AI sector, rapid model uh, expansion and generative AI initiate a revamp in AI system. Until the large language models such as transformer were introduced, you know, a typical AI model requires eight times compute performance per two-year cadence. But if you look at the chart here, so uh, after transformer model, transformer uh, model were introduced, it requires to, to uh, its compute requirement is exponentially increased, like 275 times per two years. This is insane, right? And this is, uh, we believe this is the, where the HBM become the essential component in AI server system. Industry always looking for high you know, bandwidth, high capacity, and high power efficiency. But in, uh, according to our internal, internal study, we, we think that within the next five years, all the, uh, regardless of the different server types, really requires at least four times more capacity than as of today. Comparing the different server types, so training server especially looking for at least five times more capacity than general, uh, general purpose server, while inferencing server requires two times higher capacity than the uh, GPGPU at this day. So with that in mind, Hynix have been providing HBM solution to the, uh, to the industry from the back in 2015. We, we launched our first HBM in the world uh, back in 2015. Though there were a little bit of a hiccup in HBM2, Hynix have been leading the HBM market and its ecosystem from the HBM2E to the end, uh, to, till now. And then now we are about to enter the new era of the HBM, which is called HBM4. But before we talk about a little bit more on HBM4, let me share our latest product, HBM3E, the state-of-the-art product in the universe. Compare HBN3, comparing the, our prior generation HBN3, the HBN3 can give you at least 1.5 times a higher capacity by increasing the core density from 16 gigabit to 24 gigabit. And also the bandwidth wise, we uh, provide you the at least 1.4 times a higher bandwidth by increasing the pulping speed from 6.4 gigabit to uh, 9.2 gigabit. So we are trying to hit the 
more headroom there, but uh, we will see when we, once we have the, you know, uh, more system level test rigid. For the power efficiency, thanks to the more advanced technology, we were, uh, uh, we are able to provide you the, at least the 10% higher power efficiency aspect as well. Not only the component level performance itself, but also the HPM3 can give you more economic values as well, such as resource comparability and area saving and the thermal budget saving in terms of the TCO aspect. SK Hynix would like to keep the momentum you know, moving forward and fulfill the industry needs. However, we are facing totally different level of challenges as well. First, uh, bandwidth. The so bandwidth is a critical load in AI, you know, AI computing system. However, the bandwidth target is becoming big challenge for as a DRAM vendor. So customer requirement kept moving, moving around while we are, while we are already entered the developing phase. So actually, honestly, this is driving us crazy. The worst part is that we are already reached maximum a lot of a power budget for the memory uh, in a system. So uh, we need to find a way to burn less power while supporting higher bandwidth. Sounds is already nonsense, isn't it? Second is band, uh, capacity. So as you are aware, the diet density increase is getting difficult, not to mention design difficulties and process difficulties, but also it requires a huge investment of, uh, you know, huge investment for us, such as like EUV. I think a practical way to you know, increase the package density in the HBM is to stack more dice. But if, if we go that direction, that gives us also a challenge for handling thin wafer you know, handling issues. So lastly but not the least, the thermal is the big concern. You know, as we all are aware that DRAM is vulnerable to heat thermal, right? As we stack more dice on top of one another, to fulfill the capacity requirement, the heat that we have to deal with is, is uh, uh, becoming problematic. Not only the HBM self generated the heat, but also the heat coming from the GPU or host AGIC side is a big concern as a you know, HBM, sub, H, HBM developer. Now, I'm not sure if you look at the number here, you know, upper figure shows that, uh, basically shows that host chip once, uh, when host chip temperature increase like a two degrees C, it results in at least a five to 10 degrees C temperature increase in the HPM side. So um, how do we overcome all these challenges and, how, uh, and give you the more better solution in terms of the HPM? The, our approach is here. Like first, um, wider IO, the, including the SK Harnix and all the in industry related consensus to provide you the uh, HPM solution in HPM4 by doubling the number of IOs from 1,024 to 2,048 IOs. And also we, including the SK Hynix, SK Hynix decided to adopt the logic process into our base die. So what it means that? SK Hynix teams up with the leading foundry service provider and develop logic process based die. So uh, one of the big you know, misconceptions that all the partners and customers may have is that base die isn't just a simple thing that you just simply develop and then put it together with our SK Hynix's memory core dice. No, it's not that way. So base die in HBM isn't just a separate die, uh, which can easily connect to one another. But rather, it is tightly coupled with our core DRAM dice. And requires precise, you know, uh, precise process optimiz optimization to be the final KGST. SK Hynix will own full stacking step and final test as well once the, after we receive the uh, logic process based die from the, our you know, OSEP partners. By adopting logic process, uh, we think that we could reduce at least 20% of the total power consumption of the HBM compared to the prior generation. Uh, for the thermal, we will continue to optimize our process and find a new material as we did before. And then we will put thermal micro bumps as much as we can um, for enhancing thermal heat dissipation via these thermal micro bumps. 
So uh, this is the final look like what our HBM4 you know, performance uh, look like. The bandwidth wise, we are expecting at least 1.4 times higher bandwidth by increasing the number of IOs. And also we are seeing more like up to 1.6 times higher bandwidth if we are uh, you know, also adding up the the, the performance gap uh, in terms of the pulping speed increase. Also, the density wise, HBM4 generation, uh, HBM4 uh, time frame, we will stick with the current 24 gigabit core density. But since in HBM4 generation, we are planning to support the 69 as well, so which can give you the endless 1.3 times higher capacity per package. But once we enter the second generation of the HBM4, we will increase the core density from 24 gigabit to 32 gigabit, which will give you more extra you know, the capacity in the package-wise. And also, the, thanks to the logic process, we are, by the adopting logic process, we think the power efficiency uh, has been improved at least 20% to 30%. Our first sample is expected somewhere late, you know, second half of next year, and to fulfill the customer's demand with TTM. And not only the component chip level performance but in HBM4, but also HBM gives you much, much larger implication. Lo utilizing logic, pro to, logic process to the base die enables the great opportunities that ever the DRAM industry has experienced before. Since the base die, um, since the base die using the logic process, it means various of, you know, uh, IPs and custom added value circuitry can be implemented for each customer's own purpose, such as you know different file solution, die to die solutions, different memory controller, NOC, or even cache. Basically, the gate is open for those who are eager to look for their own memory solution by optimizing memory hierarchies and memory solutions. Not to mention its performance and quality of the HBM product itself, but I think the competition or the better ground is going to be the how efficiently develop and support customized HBM solution. So to do that, uh, SK Hynix will continue to study AI system and its workload. And based on that, we will provide you our backbone of the memory solution as an IP for your own you know, customization. Eventually, customi a customer can design your own solution. We will call it as a custom memory platform. We, we expect, we hope to have the more engagement with our various of customers and partners. As you've seen in the first page of my presentation, uh, the amount of data that we have to deal with is not something that a single you know, company, single you know, partner players can handle. I think now is the time to all, we all come together as an uh, uh, eco player ec ecosystem and approach for the new performance, new level of performance improvement from a single component level to a whole system level. With that in mind, I invite you to join our new journey to make a new history of chapter in HBM. Thank you so much for listening.